Hello, 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 my wonderful subscribers! Welcome back to another wonderful tournament of Miraculous Souls! Yes, that is right. If you are not aware of what this is, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I did a little something. I tried to do a test stream, and for whatever reason, I had this idea of doing like a Miraculous Tournament of Fighting Tournament. Uh, and, uh, I was going to surprise stream everybody, and then the day came, and it was time to stream, and I couldn't stream on YouTube for some weird reason. I had to contact YouTube tech support, and it took them several weeks for some reason for them to fix the issue. So, I did stream that day on Twitch, and did not realize that Twitch needed to be set up to record said streams, so that stream that few of you may have seen is you only ever saw it and nobody else can you it's gone to the ways of time which is why today now that i have gotten a notification from the youtube tech support that my streaming capability on the youtube platform has been fixed it's time to do yet again a miraculous souls tournament Yes, that's right, this is Soul Calibur 6, and I have, over a very long period of time, and by long I mean like two days, uh, created an entire roster of some of your most favorite miraculous Ladybug characters. And what better way to utilize this wonderful character creator engine than to make them fight to the death? So, we have a very special tournament today. Uh, let's see. I have even a tournament bracket. Some of you that saw this uh, last time might think this is familiar. The arrangements are a little different. Uh, I did not personally arrange these. A computer did that. But now we have lots and lots of people. I think we have 19 different miraculous ladybug characters all challenging each other to the death. Uh, but why is that? Let us look, shall we? I have written, which some people might have remembered, a little synopsis of the current events. Scene, please. The miraculous universe is in chaos. All the miraculous have been destroyed, and the only way to restore their power is through the magic granted by Soul Edge. Passions have ignited, feuds come boiling to the surface, and unspoken grievances fly open as the corruptive force of Soul Edge's ever-increasing power comes closer within their grasp. And so, the line between friend and foe blurs, and the tournament for Soul Edge becomes a dangerous French free for all <laughs> Yes, that is right. The Miraculous Lady bug characters, for whatever reason, has entered the Soul Calibur universe, and now that they don't, none of them have uh, any of their powers, which is why today, even though you see uh, Chat Noir, Ladybug, Chloe, uh, Carapace, Rena Rouge, these are like the only costumed heroes I had time to make. So that's why uh, most of the characters in this tournament today is going to be all the uncostumed heroes, plus some extras, plus some adults. So let's find out what we have first. All right, so let me just make sure that that's all perfectly lined. I think it is all right. So we have a couple of preliminary rounds before the actual tournament kicks off. The actual tournament kicks off with all your main favorite uh, high school uh, I forget the name of the Miraculous Ladybug High School. Did that that school have a name? I'm actually not sure. I'll have to look that up. Well, all your favorite high school cast characters from the Miraculous Ladybug universe are in the main tournament bracket, which is round two. We have a couple of preliminary qualifiers to get through first. Starting with Roger, Cop, and Xavier, otherwise known as Mr. Pigeon. This is kind of familiar. It's funny that this tournament bracket sorted by a robot, is completely done uh, all by itself, completely random. And yet, last time we also had a preliminary round with Roger and Xavier. Completely random, but somehow these two are just fated to fight each other. Ah, 
God, it's it's like the universe knows that these two just can't stand each other. Roger's always going around, uh, you know, trolling Paris, making sure that... Oh, no, not arcade. Foolish me. Versus. It's going to be computer versus computer, by the way, before I get too far into this. I am not participating in the tournament because that would not be fair. Uh, one, on normal and hard difficulty, the AI to this game is fairly easy to beat. And on very hard, it will kick your ass. So me playing against the uh, computer one way or another would induce bias into this tournament, which is why we have CPU versus CPU. Anyway, we have all these parameters, all the computers versus computers. And our very first bracket will be Xavier versus Roger. All right, let me get, let me get Roger over here. Just like I was saying, parading around Paris, making sure no one is running amok. I mean, he can't do much against Akumas. That's kind of Ladybugs and, and Chat Noir's job. But when, you know, regular non-do-gutters are, are messing up the, the beauty of the Paris streets, Roger has to stop people like Xavier from feeding the pigeons. There's a sign that says, don't feed the pigeons. You know why? When you feed the pigeons, the pigeons poop on historical landmarks. Enough of this, Xavier. Roger is tired of this nonsense. You... And in fact, Roger is so tired, he's taken away his nightstick, and he's decided to pick a... Look, we're in the middle of Notre Dame. Roger! I mean, Xavier! Don't fit pigeons in Notre Dame. It's being remade. Roger has taken away his nightstick and replaced it with a battle axe. That is how serious Xavier has crossed the line this time. Xavier, on the other hand, well, he is part pigeon after all, and he actually has deceptively sharp talons grafted to the end of his fingertips. He's kind of like Wolverine. Nobody actually knew this until today. It, it wasn't until lethal force was present that Xavier donned his claws and boy, are they sharp. Roger's not having a good time. Roger's not having a good time at all. Well, actually, it's pretty even, to be honest. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Xavier's out of the first round. That, uh, that first round went to Roger. It was pretty even. The talons surprised Roger a little bit. But, you know, a good old French executioner sacks. All right, Xavier. Don't be shredding Roger's pants! This is just demeaning! This, that, that's a low blow, quite literally and figuratively. This is assault against a police officer, and not just physical assault. This is assault to their emotions! Emotional damage! Holy crap. He has... He has shamed him. Xavier? Why did you just... Why is Roger naked? What have you done? What have you done? Xavier! Chill! Holy shit! Chill! This is... This is a... Good lord! I don't know what... What... Food in Xavier's cornflakes this morning, but Xavier is just... He's on another level today. It's like, you know what? I'm tired of being bullied. I will feed the damn pigeons. Whenever I want to. Good God. He's making Roger run through the Paris streets in nothing but his briefs. This is a personal affront. It's quite literally like shame from Game of Thrones. Shame. Shame. Shame, Roger. Shame. I don't think Roger was too happy with that. Xavier took a major hit. I think I think the shame is getting to Roger just a little bit. Yeah, Roger's a little pissed off. Roger's a little Roger's a little upset. Roger's a little upset. Roger is most definitely upset. 
You can only push a man so far. Every man has his boundaries, and I think we've reached Rogers. Having his authority challenged is one thing, but being demeaned in such a way... Oh, God! Roger hasn't taken a single hit this round! He's still- he could possibly get a perfect- nope, never mind. Got a slight cut there. Xavier is fighting back from the corner he just got pushed in. But, Roger still- still got some anger in him! Still got some anger in him! Oh, this could be over and it is! It is his! Oh, God! He just threw his corpse across the floor! Do not anger an authority figure as big as Roger. Good lord. You know what? Let's be perfectly honest. Xavier deserved it. You know, he, he shouldn't he shouldn't be in an historical landmark, feeding pigeons and encouraging to poop on historical things. That in itself is a bad thing. So Roger was already upset from the get-go. But then to challenge the authority. And then demean the authority by basically doing the Zoro thing and cutting, like, their clothes off them. That's... Uh, that's just... Xavier deserved this. That was... that was all completely deserved. All right. Very well. In our very, very, very first tournament bracket, that was actually a surprisingly close match. Uh, they both had pretty even matchups, despite the flare-ups and anger. Oh, uh... But, ultimately, it went to Roger, because Xavier lost that one. Just pushed a man a little bit too far, and that means in the very first round of the real tournament, Adrian will be the one taking on Roger. Don't know what the backstory is there, but can't wait to find out. But next! Next! Well, I think we have a little bit of, uh, how shall I put this? I think... A little bit, uh, of... Mmm... Someone might be upset that someone keeps hitting on their boss. Especially when the, the employee that works, you know, for the boss, kind of has a crush on it. Audre just won't stop throwing herself at Gabriel. And Natalie has had enough. Natalie has had enough. All right, so our next bracket is Natalie versus Audrey. Audrey just will not leave well enough alone. She's just cropping up in here into the into the aggressed mansion, wanting to force us some kind of date with Gabriel, and it's just like, you know what? Natalie is like, that's the last straw. He, he's he's rejected you so many times. This is enough. What, 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 which one of these looks like the Aggressed Mansion? I normally go, uh, random. But, uh, okay, here, here we go. It's at night time. We're at night time. This is the Aggressed Mansion. That's, that's what happened. She, Audrey came over in the middle of the night just hoping for some kind of booty call. It's like, you know what? You don't have that kind of relationship with Gabriel. Enough of this! You say something? Natalie is upset! Oh yeah, Natalie Natalie works out, man. She is a little buff. She's uh, deceptively powerful even without uh, the Peacock Kwame. However, right off the bat, Audrey just throwing insult to injury. She just breaks her glasses. First hit. Net Natalie's glasses are shattered. I'm not sure if this was meant to be a demeaning move or if this was to a, a tactical move to maybe help blind her a little bit so she can't see as well. Didn't really work out for Audrey though. Kind of backfired. Just breaking her glasses made Natalie upset. No, Commander Maverick, this is not a mod. This is Soul Calibur 6, and it has a very good character creator in it. And all your character, the Miraculous Ladybug characters, are fighting each other to the death like this, where it's Natalie versus Audrey in the Aggressed Mansion. Upset, basically fighting over Gabriel's love without his knowing. It's a battle of passion. It's like, you will not hit on my man, I mean my boss. 
You're married anyway! You're married to the mayor! But sometimes passion out trumps logic. Audrey wins one round. Pretty even again. Again, the next preliminary round is surprisingly even so far. Before we had Xavier Roger and it went to 2 3. We're again at 1 to 1 with Audrey Natalie. However, Natalie is kind of laying a beat down on Audrey right now. Oh, God, yep. She shot her. She literally juggled her and shot her with a gun. Natalie has a gun, by the way. Didn't know you knew this. But she's packing. Her superpower is bullets. Natalie, on the other hand, just had to grab, like, the nearest thing, and there was, like, an old scythe on the wall. Or meant for, you know, sowing wheat or whatever. And she just yanked it off the wall and just decided to use that. To be fair, she's using it well. She's using it very well. She just nearly cut Natalie in half. In fact, she may still yet. Yep, she did. She at least left a good gash. Again, two to two, a surprisingly even matchup. Very surprising indeed. When love is, is involved, you fight with your all, I guess. Little do they know that Gabriel will never, never have either one of their hearts. He still, he still is in love with a woman in a coma. Or I guess it's a coma. I'm not really sure what it is, actually. Oh! The final blows are incoming! It's almost over for Audrey, but... Oh god, their health is identical. Audrey wins! The winch wins! The wicked winch! The wicked winch! She has done so passion! She will have a booty call! Natalie be damned! It's like, step aside, bitch! That man's mine! I've come for him! You didn't make a move. Your move was too, too late. Too little, too late. I'm coming here to take your man. That is exactly what she did. Or Natalie. Or Natalie. Again, pretty even matchup on that one. It was uh, two to three. With Audrey going forward. Two to three. Audrey. All right, we're almost done with the preliminary rounds. That is the second of the three, first three preliminary rounds. Man, I, I was, I'm not going to lie. I was kind of rooting for Natalie on this one. I don't like Audrey very much. I don't think anyone likes Audrey. Except the mayor, but he's a little, you know, he's a little whip. Not much. Uh, he's a very kind of weird, strange man. Sad, strange little man. Oh, man. Well... I guess the fight for Natalie and Audrey for Gabriel's love is over and Audrey reigns triumphant where she will fight Marinette next in the next round of the tournament. But speaking of Gabriel, I'm afraid it is now time for a different kind of battle. A battle of the dads. It is Gabriel versus Tom this round. And even though that Gabriel has no idea what's going on, we have the battle just before him, that two women around his life are fighting for his unrequited love. Gabriel, on the other hand, has just have no idea about that, and he's just taking out his frustrations on Adrian like he usually does. And Tom, Tom is a good dad. He is a good father. He's, you know, he's, he's compassionate. He's a French baker, for Christ's sakes. He makes croissants, little slices of heaven. Tom is a good boy. He has a good heart. And he's seen Gabriel mistreat Adrian one too many times. And it's like, you know what? Tom feels like it's it's important at this point. That is, I, I'm done witnessing this level of abuse. It's getting uncomfortable. You're berating your son in public at this point in front of my daughter who has a crush on him. And it's just making her sad. 
I'm going to teach you some manners on how to be a real father. And Gabriel is like, all right, come at me, bro. Come at me, bro. But I won't lie. Tom's got an uphill battle going on. Gabriel, like his son, trained many years in fencing. He is, in fact, an expert fencer. Even without his miraculous, he could run you through with a rapier. But can the finesse of a rapier stand up to a giant bread paddle? That is a giant, giant peel that Tom here uses to beat his dough and put giant croissants in the oven. And now he's going to bake Gabriel like a bun. Or not. Gabriel could just slice him to pieces, too. It's basically the quick versus the strong. Will slicing and dicing... Oh, well, the first round did. Looks like finesse over power uh, is kind of uh, looking like that will be the reign of Victor in this one. But can he keep it up? Tom's very buff. He's got a lot left in this. Gosh. All right, Gabriel's pretty formidable. Fight the giant pizza peel. Gabriel is pretty, pretty thick. He dodged that. Did you see that like flamingo dance dodge? Now he's just flexing. He could have just like stabbed him in the face there, but now nah, he like did a pose move. The gravitas from Gabriel right now. The Evo, good lord. He's just slicing him to pieces. Oh. Tom's, Tom's a little, Tom might have had enough. Nope. Nope. I think it's over. I think it's over. Yep. That round's over. God. He just sliced everything. His, his shirt's gone, his hat's gone. Now he's going for the emotional damage again. It's it's two to nothing at the moment. Tom has admittedly, over many years of baking and beating bread together and, and forming dough, over many years, Tom is actually pretty friggin' buff. If you've never seen the anime Yaketake Japan, you would know that being a baker makes mad muscles. Muscles that Tom is showing off right now and is going to use to basically grind Gabriel's bones into a paste. Oh, God! He took his shirt, too! A shirt for a shirt! We have a battle of, of true men! Somebody start the Yakuza music! This has just become... Manliness has gone off the charts! Gabriel is also really freaking ripped. What the hell? I don't remember making him that ripped. Holy crap! Tom's coming around! Tom's gone beast mode! He juggled- look at that! He juggled him! He just kept juggling Gabriel in the air! Oh, oh, oh! Yep! He ducked in and he didn't even let him dodge that time. Like, literally grabbed him by the belt and just throttled him around. All these preliminary rounds have been really intense. God, it could still go either way. And it goes for Tom! Oh no! He's revealed his banana hammock! What a way! What a way to finish Gabriel. It's like, all right, I'll let you humiliate me. I'll humiliate you, you son of a bitch. This is how you be a real good father. We have finally settled the argument. If your dad could beat up my dad, which one would it be? Turns out the answer's Tom. Gabriel was pretty formidable, but you know, sometimes, it, sometimes, isn't that just true, right? 
French royalty. They think they think they're all hot shit. And then someone comes along from the from the lower class, from the baker class, and just chops off their heads. So it's truly history repeats itself. Bye, Gabriel. Goodbye, bourgeois Gabriel. Actually, the bourgeois is, is a different family, but still. All right, so that was, again, pretty close, pretty close bracket. All the preliminary rounds were extremely tense. In fact, I think all the preliminary rounds we had went, yeah, they all went two to three. So that's, that's something. They, they fought, man, the people that weren't in the main tournament, they fought hard to get into the main tournament. Not gonna lie. So now we have, finally, the preliminary rounds are over, and the main tournament can begin. And boy, howdy, did our, our preliminary contestants fight extremely hard. Roger, Natalie, no, Roger, Audrey, and Tom are now into the main tournament. And our very, very first bracket is Adrian and Roger. Yes, Roger has gone on from fighting Xavier. And and Adrian finds out about this, kind of like what happened last time. He, he finds out that Roger's beaten up uh, Xavier. And he doesn't know the full context. That's the problem. Adrian is also a good boy. He looks out for people. He wants to defend people. He wants to right wrongs and stop, you know, injustice. But... Adrian encountered Xavier after he'd got the snot beaten out of him. And Xavier didn't really explain the reason Roger was so upset was because he had humiliated him by cutting away all his clothes and letting pigeons poop in Notre Dame. Adrian is not privy to those facts. So full of anger, full of steam, full of the fight for justice, Adrian goes over to Roger and says, Hey, you know what? That is police brutality. And I will not stand for it in my city. I'm going to stand up to the police. He is a brave boy. But a foolish one, as we all know. Adrian is brave, but foolish. There, is, there he is. There's our boy. Ready to correct an injustice that was not really an injustice. If Adrian... Just like Chat Noir often does, it just waited a few more minutes for a conversation before the battle started. Maybe, maybe such woes would not be had. Maybe such bad things wouldn't happen to either one of them. But at last, that's that's not the case, is it? That is not the case. Yes, Xavier is the real name of Mr. Pigeon. I think it's in... I forget what his last name is. It's Mr. Pigeon. Miss, But Mr. Pigeon is his Akuma name. So, it, 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 to be fair, I think no one actually remember... I'm sorry, I look away for a second, and Roger is just flinging Adrian through the air like a rag doll. What's going on? Oh, I, I, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just a little bit in shock. I looked over and he's just oh gosh. Victory will not come easily. Uh, Roger is a grown man. He is a very big guy. Don't underestimate his strength. I know that you're young and and, and full of energy, Adrian. But good lord, you're uh you're challenging a full-on authority figure here. He's big. He's got a giant axe. He's done, he's done taking nonsense today. But then again, so might you be. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh, I thought, I thought he was going to throw Adrian off a cliff there for a second. But Adrian's hanging in there. In fact, he's in fact, Adrian did the opposite. He saw what was up. He saw that he went for, like, the ring out. He was going to throw him off a cliff. And was like, you know what? Good idea, bro. Seems like a good idea. 
Oh, God. That headbutt is so brutal. Roger does have a thick skull. I mean... Maybe he didn't even need the helmet in Roger Cop. It's just his skull is actually that thick. It's not going to save him, though. Because as big as he is, it seems like speed is... Unlike the last matchup in the preliminary rounds with Tom versus Gabriel, looks like Gabriel Adrian is proving that speed and finesse might be better than strength in this case. Those fencing lessons are paying off. And it is interesting that even though he has fencing lessons, he has a different fencing style than his father. It's more flourishing and less aggressive. God, he just broke the bat's back! Sorry, that's that's Roger. That's not pain. No, oh, good lord. Adrian, are you okay? Is your spine all right? All right, maybe not. Nope, nope, not at all. Okay. Hmm. Victory will not come. That uh, that broke some bones. Can you continue, Adrian? You have a tiny body. All right. Yes, he can continue. Go. Oh, all right. Roger is just a beast right now, but... Oh! Oh! And then Adrian slashes away half his health bar. Oh, gosh. It's a clash. No! No! Oh! Roger! Roger! Roger just flung him! Flung him off the cliff! Hold on. Allow me to get an appropriate, an appropriate moment. Um, me, let me summarize this last matchup with a video clip. That uh, is, let me summarize what what just happened in video form. If I can get the uh, uh, the video screen capture to work here, or if I can find the right bloody part of the thing. Hmm. It's, it's, uh, yes. Yes, uh, basically, what, what just happened, if I may, let me get the screen capture to uh, add a new screen capture element. Mm-hmm. Basically, uh... Basically... This, uh... This just happened. This, this is basically... Basically what just happened just now. That's basically what just happened to Adrian right now. Uh, whoopsie. Let's just say it's a little bit of an oopsie. I guess Roger goes on uh, to the next matchup. Big shakeup, big surprise there. Did not see that coming, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Roger is gone beast mode. He has decided to be a super cop. That is two, that is two body counts now. It was still a close matchup, ultimately it was 2-3, but Roger, Roger came through in the end. Yeah, Mar yep, Marinette was Simba in that clip also, just watching Adrian fall off the cliffside as Roger just tossed him, long live the king, long live the king of authority. Hmm, well, on the, somewhere else, elsewhere, we have Rose versus Nathaniel. Hmm. Let's let's get let's get past this matchup because uh, that was uh, that was uh, that was powerful. That was powerful. Oh, I think I hit main menu instead of uh, versus. Oopsie. Sorry. Right back into the character selection. Oh, did I hear a did I hear a thing? Oh, hey, thank you, Patrick Hanu, for just subscribing. I don't really have the notifications set up very much, but good lord. Woo! 
Whew, all right. Let's get back to uh, uh, somewhere else. Rose. Rose versus Nathaniel. I don't know why these two have beef, necessarily. They, they're normally some of the nicest people in, uh, in the whole miraculous universe, to be perfectly honest. But I think what may have happened is that Nathaniel was doodling like everybody, and, and maybe, like, Rose peeked into his art book a little bit too soon, and her drawing was ugly, and she's a little bit mad about that. By the way, we must be in the Egyptian part of the Louvre Museum, I guess. Did you know they added a new virtual reality room? Pretty impressive. Well, Nathaniel is upset. Oh. It's like, you know what? That's my art book. Leave my art stuff alone. People, you know, making fun of my art or my perceived them not liking my art has caused serious problems in the past. I'm not going to take any more guff, especially from the likes of you, Rose. But it's not... It's... Rose is still fired up. In fact, so fired up that she just beat Nathaniel in the face. Victory will not come easily. It must be seized. But will Nathaniel reciprocate? Reciprocate? It seems so. I don't know where Nathaniel got a sword, by the way. It's like, you know, Nathaniel was just was just chilling. And he got so upset. Did Nathaniel just toss Rose off a cliff? Yes, yes, it seemed that Nathaniel just tossed Rose off a cliff. Yeah, that is exactly what happened. It's interesting that that Rose gets to keep her little wand, despite not having a miraculous, but... Nathaniel just has a sword. He probably got it at a convention. You know, it's just one of those display models that are slightly overpriced, but, you know, also cuts paper, so it's like, oh. I really want one of those. Nathaniel blew, like, his last $80 on a sword that's he doesn't really need, but... He's really proud to have, and it makes him look cool, he thinks. Surprisingly, though, he does know how to use it. Rose. Rose is not doing good. I'm surprised. Nope, okay. Nope, yep, Rose is, Rose is out of it. You know, that, that serves Rose right, you know? Art is art. A person's art is their art. You shouldn't be doing things with it. Or be, you know, taking it, crying at it, or looking at it. Unless the artist said you want it to. Art is art, man. Respect the privacy. Don't be going stealing his pages. Maybe that's what happened. She stole stuff. She stole his doodles. Don't steal art. Get in trouble for that. So much in trouble, in fact, that Nathaniel will come with you with a katana, slice you in half, and then kick you down a giant cannon in the canyon in the middle of Egypt for some reason. Don't know why they were in Egypt, but they were in fact in Egypt. Okay. Well, I think I think Rose got one in, if I remember correctly. But that was the first matchup that wasn't two to three, if I remember correctly. Nathaniel, Nathaniel got that mostly in the bag. And why not? He was in the right, after all. And that means in his next matchup, he will be going against Roger. But that is not it yet. Next. We have an interesting matchup. We have a very interesting matchup. You no, know, Nino is pretty lucky. He's basically got a girlfriend. He's got Ollie. 
Well, that it's wonderful that he has Alia, and I'm glad they're very happy for each other. But his boy Adrian, you know, dense as a neutron star that he is, he just can never pick up on the fact that Marinette has a crush on him. And now, by the time that, you know, even Nino sees this, is Alia tries to keep that kind of stuff to herself, but, you know, maybe Nino accidentally picked up the wrong phone and might have seen some text messages from Marinette freaking him out about Adrian. And, you know, he, he knows now that Marinette is very much in love with Adrian and he's just a dense, dense, stupid boy that doesn't see it. And I think that Nino has decided it's time. It's time to be a true wingman. He sees someone else muscling in on what he perceives should be Adrian's territory. Nino ships Marinette and Adrian at this point. He wants to see them happy together. He wants to see his best friend happy with a girl that would make him happy, but right as that's going to happen, there's another boy, another boy stepping in. Nino can't allow it. Nino can't allow Marinette's heart to get stolen. And there go steal his friend's happiness. Nino has taken up his carapace shield. And it is time to stop Luca from stealing Marinette's heart once and for all. We have to sink this ship, says Nino. But will that be what happens? This is a matchup that could be quite contentious for a lot of you. You know, a lot of you, I know, go either way. And this could, in fact, also go either way. Is Adrian and Marinette, Adrianette, truly meant to be? Or is it going to be Lucanette that goes on forward? Adrian, after all, is kicked out of the competition. What is Adrian going to do if Luca wins? A lot is on the line! And Nino is here to try and save Adrian's love life! And he's going to do so by doing his damnedest to try and kick Luca off a cliff and failing to do so! But he finally did it! After failing like three different occasions to try to kick him off that ledge. He finally got that last hit in. But he forgot that Luca's actually a pretty good climber and within no time he's back up here and he's ready to fight again. And boy, he's bringing the anger. Like, you know, Luca Ned is, Luca just, like, you know what? Stay in your lane, bro. This is between me and her and him. What's your deal? Oh God, all right. All right, what well, the shirts have started coming off. Get your squeeze in. Well, even though Nino's actually doing pretty good. Luke is not hanging in there very much. Luke has got some abs, man. It's a shame what Marinette might be missing out on if Nino reigns victorious. But Nino's on fire. So far, Luca hasn't even gotten one round win. Nino is just basically he ambushed Luca. Luca wasn't prepared. Luca wasn't prepared at all. It's a complete sweep. He threw his dead body down a cliff. It happened again! It happened again! N Nino! Nino! Has, has taken Lucanet. He has sank the Lucanet ship. It was a complete and utter... Just trounce. Oh my god. Luca did not win a single one. Whew. Whew. Nino was fired up.
Nino has proven him. If anything, Nino has proven himself one hell of a wingman. Nino is the ultimate wingman. He just straight up ambushed Luca and kicked his ass. Oh my gosh, there is no more Luca net ship. Oh, there was. There's no more Luca net ship. Good lordy. That was, uh. That was spicy. Good, good job, Nino, I guess. I mean, hey, it's. You, you might have disappointed some people out there. But I know that you very, very potentially made one Adrian who needs some help right now. Needs some help. You made him a very happy boy, I'm sure. He may not realize it, possibly for many years. He is still as dense as a neutron star, but, uh, you know, you've done good. Congratulations, Nino. You've done wonderful things. And the very next thing, what do we have here? I didn't even look. Oh, my. We have Chloe versus Kagami. And it's not hard to imagine why these two are, you know, at odds with each other. Really, it's not hard to imagine why anyone would be at odds with Chloe. That's that's kind of a non-given. I mean, you know, Chloe... Chloe's, let's say, have a, has an abrasive personality. I'm sure that uh, there's very, very nice people, very sweet people that would still get cross enough with Chloe to want to punch her in the face. Kagami, it's herself. You know, is not necessarily known for being the most graceful of people. She has some fire in her. And that fire is unleashed after just one too many bitchy comments that Chloe let fly. They were just hanging out here in, in Paris Central Park or Paris Park. And, you know, just Chloe made some comment about, like, her last fencing match, Gami's last fencing match, that she just wasn't really all that good. And that her tie doesn't fit right. Kagami's just like, you know what? Draw your weapon. Draw a sword. Let's fence right now. Fortunately, Kagami did not take into the fact that uh, even though uh, Chloe doesn't have a Miraculous right now, she still has Spinning Top. And uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty fearsome. She can, she can still do some very scary things. Chloe, despite being bitchy, is pretty, pretty, uh, formidable within herself. But so is Kagami, which is why things are pretty even so far. Not even enough, though, because that, at that round ended with Kagami basically throwing Chloe to the ground and stomping her in the face. I think she's made her point clear. But, uh... Perhaps Chloe has something else to say about that. How how dare how dare someone assault a bourgeois as Chloe? She would say. She's upset about this that she would dare offend the honor of the mayor's daughter and just overall being her bitchy self. And you know, hey, it's. It's unfortunate, but sometimes it works. Sometimes just being a strong personality does get you things, as unfortunate as that is. Which is why Chloe might win this, or not. No, okay, yeah, it's, it's, it's one to one. It's one to one. I will say that the rounds in this fight so far, it's been pretty scary. Their health bars have been pretty even in both rounds so far. Chloe takes some damage and then Kagami takes some damage. Except maybe this time. Nope, all right, she still takes some damage. Chloe, fighting back. Kagami's got more health in this situation, though. Good lord! The fact that she can juggle people like this is quite incredible! What? What 
is happening? Good lord! Oh, oh, and she finished it with another stomp! All right, she took that, she took that kick in the face in the first round personal. Chloe turned it around on her. It's like, all right, I'm gonna show you what it's really like to step on someone. I'm an expert in stepping on people. Let me show you how it's done. And she's going to do it again. Nope, nope, all right, it's fine. Oh, yep, she's going to do it again. She evens asked, do you want a beating? Oh, God! She stepped! She did it. She stepped on Kagami. Well, Chloe has proven that she's she's definitely good at stepping on people. She 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 got kicked in the face in the first round, and she took that as a personal affront. That was Chloe was not gonna have any more of that. No sir, no siree, no siree was she going to have any more of that. All right, so I believe that tournament bracket. Uh, I think Gami once again got... It was one win, correct? And then Chloe got to the... Th it's interesting how in our actual rounds of tournament that uh, things have not been as even. Excuse me. Let me, let me do something here. One moment. Why is my... Why, my mouse is gone. I can't see my mouse. The game... Why I can't see my mouse? I can't see things. There we go. My mouse is back. There we go. Excuse me one moment. Let me just get rid of that. And... Okay, good. All right, so... So where are we now in the tournament bracket? We are... Marinette versus Audrey. That is correct. So... Audrey has gone on from her preliminary rounds. And she finally gets to enter into the fray of the main tournament. She's beaten Natalie for Gabriel's love. And now, Marinette stands in her way. Why would Audrey target Marinette, you might say? Well, perhaps, especially now that Luca has been sunk by Nino, perhaps Audrey sees Adrian's happiness, Adrian's relationship to Marinette as somewhat of a threat to Gabriel's happiness. Audrey, after all, wants Gabriel to be happy. And as we've seen, Gabriel has not, in several timelines, approved of Marinette and Adrian's relationship. Depressing as it might be, unfortunate as it might be, Audrey is seeking to reinforce that decision. He wants, or she wants, Gabriel to let Adrian marry someone that Gabriel chooses. It's very, very old-fashioned. And that's the way things be. Which is why a Audrey has come for Marinette. She secured the love of her own man, or so she thinks. So now it's her duty to make her... Make her much happier. Where is Marinette? Oh, there she is. But just because Marinette doesn't have her Wami... Just because she doesn't have a miraculous... Doesn't mean she can't fight. He's a baker, after all. And bakers are very talented in the way of rolling pin food. Which Marinette is adept at. Just because she doesn't have superpowers doesn't more doesn't mean she can't rightfully kick your ass 
She's got a rolling pin and she's going to beat you with it. Or Audrey is going to cleave her in half. Or not. Yep, no, Marinette. Marinette is going at this. Like you stepped in, you stepped into the wrong person, lady. What's your problem? Did you beat up Adrian's dad, Marinette said? That will make Adrian unhappy. I'm going to beat you now. I'm going to throw you into an oven and bake you like a bun. God, yeah, I think Audrey might have, might have, uh, broken off a little bit more than she can chew. She also was not aware that, uh, Marinette is a former superhero, and that Marinette is really good at hitting things with a rolling pin. Audrey has severely underestimated Marinette's power, which is saying a lot, because... She beat Gabriel, and Gabriel's pretty formidable. To make things more upsetting, though, Cease. Audrey has destroyed her jacket. Oh god, she's doing this again! She did th the same move twice! Good lord! She was so determined to cut that dough in half! She did it twice! She now has one- she had one bread loaf and now has three! Don't- don't let her get away with that, Marinette. Don't let her get away with that. She had her round. Beat her! Yes! Audrey has been defeated! The battle is over. Show respect for the fallen who fought so bravely. I'm I'm glad. I was I was really rooting for Marinette on that one, not gonna lie. I was really, really rooting for Marinette on that one. I didn't want Audrey to continue winning. I uh, Audrey is I don't like no one likes Audrey. The whole bourgeois family is, is somewhat dislikable, except maybe Mayor Bourgeois himself. And that's just because, you know, Mayor Bourgeois himself has got basically no self-confidence whatsoever, despite being a mayor. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Mary just let her win one time. I'm not even sure if Audrey even was able to do as devastating of a move as she thought. Just Marinette was so good. It's like, you know what? I'll give you this one. I'll even I'll even let you tear the jacket. And then she just beat her into a pulp. Just completely and utterly destroyed her. Because it was Marinette 3 and Audrey 1. Marinette is nothing to be trifled with. I mean, Adrian wasn't either, and that was kind of a surprise that Roger was able to defeat Adrian, but... Let's be perfectly honest. I love Chat Noir. I really do. But of the two superheroes, the two main superheroes, Ladybug and Chat Noir, we all know Ladybug is ten times more effective as a superhero than Chat Noir is. And that translates with Marinette's own abilities. Marinette is just simply on another left. She just doesn't want, you know, to insult anybody by spanking otherwise. And, well, he... She beat Audrey. And Audrey was nothing to be pushed over. She beat Natalie. But next... is another interesting matchup. It's Juleka versus Mark. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Well, Jalaka has taken this as a personal affront. You see, don't forget that Rose and Nathaniel had quite a battle earlier. And Nathaniel was the one that rose out on top, if I'm not mistaken, 
Nathaniel threw Rose off a cliff. Jaleka took that personally. So personally, in fact, Jaleka wanted to hit Nathaniel where it hurt. He didn't want, she didn't want to just hit him. He didn't want to throw Nathaniel off a cliff. Jaleka wanted Nathaniel to feel the same pain of what it's like to lose your loved one. That's right. Juleka's not going after Nathaniel. Juleka's going after Mark. Juleka's got a bit of a mean streak in her, not gonna lie. He's pretty dark. I mean, why not? She dresses up like a goth chick. Those, you gotta be scary. You gotta watch them. They harbor some pretty scary thoughts. And if you cross them, oh man, bad things can happen. Where is Mark? There's Mark. Bad things can indeed happen. In a cursed castle hall, warriors dance in a masquerade. She's going for the heart. So you want to fight? I want to finish this up quick. She's going after Mark. Oh, and I didn't know it. Is it, is it, Jul I don't know how it's, I always forget, I've heard her name pronounced several different ways. I always say Julika because I've heard it that way. But if it's like Julika or something, whatever, she has a weird ass name. It is, you're right, it's gay versus gay. Lesbian power versus gender fluidity. What will reign? Oh God, it's very even. Holy, how is Mark alive? Okay, for a second, Mark had no health bar and was still standing. That's, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. Not gonna lie, it's pretty impressive, but a strong wind could have tipped him over at that point. And, and it did. But that doesn't mean that they're done. They're, re they're ready. They're ready to get some battle on. Just because Nathaniel. You know, Nathaniel was in the right after all. He, he fought Rose because, you know, there was, he was prying into his artwork. And she, he didn't like that. Julika, Julika, whatever, and Rose have just become problem people in this tournament. Oh, come on. Come on, Mark. Let's keep it even. Victory goes to the last one. We've, had, we've had too many rounds in the main tournament that were pretty one-sided. You guys are, you are both representation characters. You have to fight strong. After this, there will only be one representation character. Now you have to win. Juleka, Juleka is so pissed that she literally just grabbed some column out of the floor. Started swinging it around. Mark's got knives, though. He also got one of the, he went to the same convention with Nathaniel. And he got one of the more, like, ceremonial looking blades. Didn't realize that, you know, they actually, it was made pretty cheap, so it fell apart pretty quick. But the fact that it can detach and become two swords is part of the charm now. He can dual wield. It's also just noticed that Julia's now got no top on. He, he cut away the dress. Things are getting serious. The bisexual energy in this match is just too much. Oh God, speaking of. There goes another jacket. If anyone's confused as to why why Mark might have some chesty bumps, it's because uh, the male hair color schemes are really bad in this game. So that might be why that 
Mark and Nathaniel both are technically female models. Because their hairs aren't available for the male models. But hey, it, it makes sense for Mark. Mark's gender fluid anyway, so why does it, it, it fucking works? It works. Works so much, in fact, that Mark reigns supreme. The battle is over. Show respect for the fallen. Mark has successfully defended... Defended Nathaniel's right. And you know, why not? At that point, why not? Because, again, Rose and Julia were the ones in the wrong. I mean, Rose was prying into stuff that she shouldn't have been prying into. And then instead of settling things with Nathaniel, Julia decided to go after Mark. Just to make it personal. That They needed to be put in their place. They were overacting. Overacting in that. Pretty close matchup, though. I believe it was two to three. Mark reigns supreme. Let us get that tournament bracket back to the stage of history retold. And look, me see. So it was ultimately Mark reigns supreme. Good for Mark. Good for Mark. They, they deserved it. They deserved it. But. The next is Alia versus Tom. Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Alia versus Tom. So, Alia might have done a bad thing. See, she might have made a comment on the lady blog to give, um, shall we say, Marinette's Bakery some business. She wanted to do her best friend a favor, and she posted on the lady blog uh, this wonderful bakery in town. And it was Marinette's Bakery. The same bakery that Tom runs. But she might have made an error in commenting. And when Alia made her post on the lady blog, she may have inadvertently said that, you know, the bread is at its best when Marinette is cooking. When Marinette isn't cooking, it's not quite as fresh. But when Marinette, my girl, is at the bakery, you know, the croissants and the macrons are just to die for. Now, you would think that's flattery, but don't forget that Tom has honor of his own. He is a famous French baker. He's been baking all his life. He comes from a line of bakers. So even though that the compliments are nice to fall... Oh, I, I completely... This is the wrong... Hold on. I am in the wrong. This is the wrong matchup. This is the wrong matchup. This is the wrong matchup. How do I exit this matchup? Hold on one moment. This is the wrong matchup. I clicked the wrong people. That's not supposed to be Marinette. That's supposed to be Alia. My brain autopiloted the wrong people. Why is this? I can't exit the match. Yes, I can. Main menu. That's that was not Alia. That was not Alia. Bad things happened. Whoops. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. That was not supposed to happen. Okay, let's let's get back into the the versus bit here. It was supposed to be Tom versus Alia. Because Tom is slighted that Alia would make such a comment that Marinette is a better baker than Tom. Now, you would think that Tom would be fine with that because Marinette is his daughter, but he's got his own honor. Tom taught Marinette how to bake. And ultimately, because Marinette has school and is also a superhero, Tom bakes more. So the fact that someone would dare say that Marinette's baking is better than her father He's got to deal with that. You won't 
His honor is on the line. He's got to stop this. All right, right out the gate, Tom just comes in with a punch that destroys all his jacket. I'm not even sure if he meant to do that. It was just like it's that strong of a punch was enough just to send it into different threads. Good Lord! Yeah, Tom's a beast. Victory goes to the, last one. the lady blog might be in trouble. The lady blog might might be down soon if it doesn't have its top admin and moderator. This is what you get for leaving a yet negative Yelp review. Tom will not, or or maybe he will. Maybe Alia will just say, "Hey, you throw me down a cliff, I can do the same to you." There he goes. Yeah, Ollie is mad now. Ollie is mad. She's so mad that she's turned her Rena Rouge flute into a pair of nunchucks. And now she's slapping Tom all around. Like you shouldn't even be mad at me. I'm making I'm making things for your daughter. I'm I'm praising your daughter so when she owns the bakery when you're gone. She'll be better than you are. Oh man, man, Ollie—that's really close. But Ollie is pulling through. She's done. She's taken off her glasses. That means she's done serious business. That is not hindering her ability to see at all. She also looks very pretty without her glasses. Not gonna lie. Just a personal note. Can a little teenage girl that runs a website beat a big old man with a baking paddle? Maybe so, or maybe not. Maybe not at all. Maybe the power of bread is truly too powerful to deal with. The power of bread is a strong one, but the power of social media might be even stronger. Or not. Perhaps. Perhaps bread is just truly too, too, too powerful. Or is it? Pretty back and forth in this matchup. Pretty back and forth. Oh, again, coming out on the horse. Ollie, it's not looking good for you, girl. It's not looking good for you. You've got to get some strikes in now. He made that personal. He literally just choked her out and said, hey, stand aside. Do not diss the master baker. Marinette is in fact my daughter, but she's still in training. I am still the old baker. Yep, that, uh, that that what that happened that that absolutely happened all right then so we're almost almost through in this first uh main round of the tournament here and so far Tom has proven to be kind of a beast he's got uh oh no it was three and it was i think two alia quite tom has proven to be quite a beast he beat up gabriel for you know, his daughter's honor, well, actually for Adrian's honor, because he's a bad dad. And then, uh, then he beat up Alia for his own honor. Tom has got two wins so far. And the only other person in the tournament with two wins is Roger. So big guys with big weapons seems to have an edge in this tournament. But will that be proven by the next bit? Sabrina and La Lila.
There's not much you need to know about these two. Let's be perfectly honest. Lila's... Lila's a bitch. Let's, there's just no other way to put it than just Lila. Lila is something fierce. Lila, no one likes Lila. Just like no one likes Audrey, no, definitely no one likes Lila. Lila lies. Lila just doesn't like people in general. She's evil. That's always a problem. But every school has to have their one, like, bad bitch. You know what I mean? For the most part, that's Chloe. But Lila threatens that position. Sabrina cannot allow the position of the school's baddest bitch to go to Lila. Just like Nino stepped in to beat up Luca as kind of a wingman situation, Sabrina is stepping in to beat up Lila simply because her existence challenges Chloe's status. So, Sabrina, will you do what everyone wishes and cleave Lila in half? Maybe, but Lila's evil, which means she has magic powers for some reason. Just because, just like everything, where Lila cheats at everything, she couldn't decide to use one weapon. She had to pick all of them. Not that it's helping her, though, because Sabrina... Well, all right, maybe it is helping her. Sabrina was tra tearing her up to shreds, but what happened? What even happened there? Oh, it was a battle axe. She just conjured a battle axe from the sky and dropped it on Sabrina's head. Cheap shot. Come on, Sabrina, I'm rooting for you. Yeah! Pick her off the cliff! Victory will not come easily. Do it! See it again! Yes! Oh god, I just noticed that Sabrina's shirt's already gone. I'm not sure if she took that or off, or, or if Lila did. Come on. It's okay, by the way, for me to be completely biased. These are... They, I'm not playing, after all. They are fighting each other. So I have... I have no input. It's fine if I'm biased. What is happening? What the hell happened? What was that? What was that? What did Sabrina just do? What happened? Did she just bite her? Did Sabrina Mike Tyson fight life? What was that, Sabrina? I, no, I think we need to stop and hold back a second. What was that? Sabrina's got a scary side. I didn't see that coming at all. Oh, man. She hung in there for a sec, but I'm still, I'm still in shock. Is, is Lila missing a nose? Is everything all up, up and up? Is everyone, all the fighters fit to continue? Should we disqualify? Well, I don't know, but it seems that Lila might be having this one. In fact, this looks starting to look like a perfect match. And it is. Lila pulls out a, a perfect match and to throw insult to injury, flings Sabrina's corpse off the side of the cliff. I guess the status of baddest bitch has been proven. I think she's missing an ear. You can't see her ear under her hair. I think Sabrina took an ear by biting it off Mike Tyson style. But ultimately, she still lost. She went peril. She went beast mode. 
But it was not, it was not enough. It was not enough. Which means the next bit, let's see, that was, that was intense. That was again, two to three. That concludes the first main round of the tournament. Whew, that was a, that was a big round. That was a lot of matchups, a lot of different characters. Not gonna lie. And you know, we had, we had uh, only three preliminary rounds and then we had, you know, gosh, so many. One, two, three, four different no, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We had eight different rounds that that matchup. Pretty major. Now it's cut in half. It's only four the next round. Oh, good lord. And our next one is Roger versus Nathaniel. Roger is pretty beastly. He's got two KOs at this point. Nathaniel's only got one. Roger is one of the two winners from the preliminary rounds, and he has gone on to battle Nathaniel in the third round. And uh, it's understandable, because, you know, Nathaniel's been experimenting for some time now with different art styles. You know, kind of like how Jazza on YouTube just experiments with different art styles all the time. Like, one time we'll just be drawing with, like, ancient Sumerian writing techniques, and the next he'll be painting with wax and... Things like that. Nathaniel's an artsy person like that, too. He experiments with art. He likes to do that kind of thing. Unfortunately, Nathaniel has dabbled in the world of graffiti. And it's uh, it's not really a good thing to do. Especially in a historical city as much as Paris. And for lack of a better term, Nathaniel's been caught red-handed. He's been making graffiti. Not inflammatory graffiti. Not offensive graffiti. Just doodles and things like that, you know, cute things, making a mailbox look like a, a lion or something, or, or, or a, a shark, or giving things mouths and googly eyes, cute stuff like that, but vandalism is still vandalism in Roger's eyes, and Roger will not have anything of it. Roger has had enough. He will not allow Paris to be defaced. But Nathaniel is like, you know, we are Paris. Oh, God. Sorry. Nathaniel got launched up in the air there for a second. It took me by surprise. Oh. Oh, no. Nathaniel's shirt. His jacket's gone. What? He stabbed Roger in the gut. It's like, you know what? You might be upset with graffiti, but you know what? We're Paris, a culture center of art. We have some of the greatest art in the world, Roger. Allow artists to express themselves, Roger. No, no, Roger's not having it. Rod Roger's never been an art guy. But Roger's more of, you know, the his cleanliness and order kind of dude. If he wants to see art, he'll go to the Louvre. But it isn't even matchup so far, still one to one. You know, I, I, I like to think that uh, when that one that one famous artist gets caught, what is it? Uh, what's his name? The the famous graffiti artist. Get his name. Famous graffiti artist. Banksy. That's right. I like to think that when Banksy gets caught by some overzealous cop, it'll eventually go something like this. It won't even just be, you know, a regular battle. It'll be a duel between a sword and a battle axe. Man, things not going panning out well for the artists in this case. Roger's just... Just 
grinding him into the ground. Just not a good time for Nathaniel. He's still in this, though. He can still win. And I hope it... God, God! Raptor's just so brutal! Yep! Roger, Roger. Roger's had it. Roger's on a tear. Roger is just on, on a reign of chaos. Roger, yet again, that is Roger's third win this tournament because of his preliminary round win. And I think the power is starting to go to his head, to be perfectly honest. The power is starting to go to his head because he's starting to realize that he can't be stopped. He never needed Akuma Powers to be the world's most powerful cop. He never needed to be Roger Cop. Roger Cop wasn't the Akuma. He is Roger Cop. But. A lot. We get away from that bit. From authority gone rampant, gone wild. To the stage of history. But we go back to Nino's conquest to secure Adrian's happiness. Yes, last time Nino bought, fought, he just basically ambushed Luca and beat him to beat him up. He beat him to death, basically. Just kicked his ass and threw him off a cliff. He wanted to do this because he wanted to sink the Lucanet ship. But. He did succeed in doing so. Even though Adrian got knocked out of the round early by Roger of all people who yeeted him off a cliff also. But now that Adrian's licking his wounds and, and you know, recovering, he's still the whole reason Nino attacked Luca in the first place is because he knows that Adrian will be most happy with Marinette. He wants them to get together. He's seen Alia's phone. He's seen their texts. He knows Marinette is in love with Adrian. And now Nino knows the next biggest obstacle in Adrian's hap happiness is Chloe. As Chloe still throws herself at Adrian all the time. Nino needs to put an end to this. Like, no. Just, just like the the father before, fine. Nathaniel challenged Audrey because Audrey would not stop throwing herself at Gabriel. Nino is doing the same here with Chloe. It's like, you will not stop throwing yourself at Adrian and I've had enough of it. Like mother, like daughter. I will not allow you to be Audrey 2.0 to my boy, Adrian. And so the battle begins. Both of them trying to knock each other off the cliff, which is an interesting move. They've been going back and forth a little bit in health in this match, but it's interesting to see that both Characters here have been trying to go for ring outs each time. That seems to be a favorite maneuver of a lot of people in this tournament so far. All right, they've, they've decided to stop throwing each other off the cliff now for whatever reason they think that they can't handle anymore. So they're sticking to the center of the match now. Just deciding to see who's the best. And Nino's not doing very well. He's kind of getting ripped to shreds. Victory will not come easily. In fact, was that Chloe's second win or was that her first win? No, that was Chloe's second win. Nino hasn't gotten a win yet. That's that's not good. Nino was counting on the fact that he is a superhero in secret win this battle for him. That's kind of how he beat Luca. He's had 
as Parapus, he has had way more experience as a superhero than Luca did. That's not necessarily so true with Chloe as Queen Bee. Nino's still in this, though. If he gets one more hit, he can be saved this round, and he has. Yeah, it's, it does seem that Audrey and Chloe are both in a war against glasses. They keep fighting people with glasses. They keep breaking glasses. That's right. Chloe in the, her last match broke glasses. No, wait, it was Kagami. Never, never mind. All these matches beginning to... Oh, wait, no, Chloe wins! I just noticed because I forgot that it was only one to three. Well, as honorable and perhaps overzealous as Nino's wingman duties were, had not be outmatched by Chloe's thirst. Sometimes the thirst is just too strong. And in this case, it most certainly was. Chloe wins that matchup and wins the second bout of tournament, of the main tournament. Nino, uh, I think only... Did he even get... Yeah, he got one. But Chloe got three. The thirst is strong with Chloe. It's strong enough to beat Nino, for sure. But next on the bracket is Mark and Marinette, of all people. It's a pretty odd matchup, to say for sure. But, you know... Things happen. Things most certainly happen between even even good people. Mark has gone a little bit crazy for Nathaniel. To the stage of history retold. No. Gee, he's he's Mark's gone a little bit upset that Nathaniel lost the tournament. They were supposed to win together. There was going to be a thing like Hunger Games where they got to the final bracket. And, and, like, they did the thing where, like, they were gonna, like, not compete, even if it meant their own life. It was going to, it, it was not going to be Nathaniel. But, uh, it's, unfortunately, after Nathaniel got kicked out of the tournament, Mark's just kind of gone crazy. At this point, he doesn't care. He, he's lost all semblance to what means... What has meaning in his life at this point. And he doesn't care at this point who, who they face. Even someone as sweet as Marinette. Everything that lives is designed wow. Now well, Paris is looking a lot more disheveled than I remember it. I want to finish this up quick. Paris may be in scrambles. But... The bread is still strong. Come on, Marinette. Mark's gone crazy. He must be stopped. Okay, I don't know how that happened. Marinette was able to kick Mark over the barrier. There's like three different sides of this arena that she could have easily just beaten Mark off the edge off of. But she went the extra mile for the insult to injury by kicking Mark over the small barrier there. And Mark is upset by it. Mark's taking his weird ceremonial blade that he got from an anime convention, and he is going to slice Marinette's buns. And succeeds in doing so. Mark is Nathaniel's love interest. Mark. Mark slicing Marinette. 
Pretty even so far. One to one. Mark's almost out of health. And Mark failed. Mark has failed that round, but what about the truck? Lot on the line. Mark has just gone crazy. Oh! Oh! Oh man, I thought that was going to be in a marionette there for a second. But still managed to stay in. Mark only has to... Never mind! Never mind! I was about to say that Mark only has to get in a few hits to make things even. But then Mark got yeeted off a building. Well then. Marinette... To no big surprise, to no one's surprise, comes out on top. The power of red just truly was too powerful there. So we will update that bracket now. So there, let's see. It was all three to Marinette. No, not four. And I think Mark only got one because he was about to get, he was just a few hits away from getting, evening things up and having more of a shot, but... Marinette yeeted him off, off the building. He yeeted them off. Meanwhile, um, things are kind of, go back to Tom, our other main winner, our other biggest winner in the tournament so far, Tom, like Roger, has three wins, while well, Roger now has four. But Tom now has got to go against Lila, and it's not hard to imagine why. Lila is a bitch and it's not hard to imagine that all Lila had to do was step in to the bakery to the stage of history. eat a macron or a macaroon and say ew it's too salty so then you know Tom goes back there and it's like alright I'll, I'll make a different batch I'll do less salt it's like oh not enough salt alright Lila I'll make a third batch and then she'll finally say, Oh, I don't like Macrons. Tom's had enough. He will not allow any more of this nonsense in his bakery. That and Lila did get his daughter expelled, so he was already on, you know, thin, shaky ground with Lila coming in. But he's a professional, and he tried to remain professional. But then, you know... She just said the buns were shitty. So that's that's one thread too far. Tom's had enough. He's still full of bloodlust anyway. He's proven his honor as a baker. He's proven his honor as a father. Now he must prove his honor as a business owner. Don't be insulting my buns. Don't be coming here making a ruckus. Don't be trying to get my daughter expelled from school. I will punch you. And he did. Little, little surprise that Lila has magic powers. Tom was not expecting that. But Tom ultimately still has the has the advantage in this situation. He's got one win already. No, then Lila pulls off a perfect. Victor completely, completely turns the tables. Destroys his jacket or his shirt and chef hat again. Tom's back in the buff again. This is now the second fight that Tom's fought in the buff. And I'm not sure if that was a good call on Lila's part. I know that she's just trying to, like, rub insult to injury. She's trying to rub salt in the wound. But when Tom goes shirtless, he goes beast mode. 
But beast mode is being held back. Holy crap! Lila! Lila is beating the Master Baker! Tom has got three wins and Lila's just making mincemeat of him! Come on, Tom. Stand up to Lila. You can't let this happen. You can't let Lila make a fool of you. Outside of Roger, you've been the strongest guy in this tournament. Tom! Tom, no! Tom, get back on your feet, Tom! Tom, defend yourself! Okay, he's back in the game. He's back in the fight. He almost got knocked out of the game there. But Tom's back in the fight. He tried to throw her off the edge, but just, you know, went a little too loose, a little too soon. You're still in this fight, Tom. You're okay. Just don't get cocky. Don't let Lila get the upper edge. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's done playing around. It's like you got goofy magic shit. I got goofy magic shit, too. I'm the last horseman of the bread apocalypse. Bread can be very dangerous. Have you never seen Expiration Date, the TF2 movie? You're not careful. Tom will do nothing but teleport bread for three days. And just like that, he turns Lila into a piece of flatbread. Get on you, Tom. Good on you. You've be, I've been somewhat afraid of you the entire tournament so far. For, you know, beating up so many people. But in this case, I was rooting for you the entire time. No one likes Lila. No one likes Lila. Whew, that was that was close. That was a pretty close one. To the stage of that was the, by far, the toughest match Tom has had so far. It was three to two. He almost got kicked out. He almost got kicked out in the, that second round there. But he's okay. He's okay. He's still in the tournament. As a matter of fact, interesting that we are now down to the semifinals. The third round of the tournament, or I should say the main second round of the tournament, is done. And... We're down to the semifinals, and two of our four semifinalists were from the very first preliminary round. Both Roger and Tom are in the semifinals. Both big old buff dudes with big old giant weapons. Roger with a giant battle axe, and Tom with, well, I, I guess it's a pizza peel or some kind of it's some kind of feel for managing a giant oven. It's a baking utensil. It's very broad and big. But now, Marinette and Tom have to fight each other. Things have, things have gone well. Actually, first, before that happens, before that happens, we have to go back to check in on the Roger situation. Roger has had a lot of wins. Roger went from defeating... Xavier, Mr. Pigeon, to, for, you know, eating the pigeons at Notre Dame, which he shouldn't have been doing, for fighting Adrian, who tried to correct that injustice and tossing him off a cliff like a rag doll, then beating up Nathaniel for graffiti. Roger Cop has gone crazy. He's back on his authority craze. And now the slightest little infraction is now a major offense to Roger. Chloe, who is in herself kind of a bitch, didn't even do anything. She was jaywalking. She got caught crossing the street at not a proper crosswalk. That is what happened with Roger in this situation. He's gone mad with power, mad with authority. The 
Tales of ancient battles slumber eternally unknown. I know this seems like a rather odd place in Paris. Most people haven't seen it. But Roger does patrol here sometimes. Chloe just got lost. But jaywalking is still a serious offense. She's still very good at stepping on people, though. Immediately, right off the bat, Chloe trying to prove that she doesn't care about his authority at all. Stepping on him, breaking his bones, deflecting him? Okay. Despite being such a fearsome opponent so far in the tournament, Roger just got sliced up like mincemeat. Chloe barely moved that round. She dealt with Roger so nonchalantly, it was like swatting a fly. Will she continue this pattern, though? For some reason, Roger is pretty defensive at the moment. He's taken aback. He wasn't expected to be beaten up so easily by this little high school girl. He's shaken up a little bit. He's on the defensive. He doesn't really understand what's going on. God! Chloe is just... Victory will not come easily. As powerful as Roger is, Chloe is Queen Bee. She's even shred his hat. God! Chloe is just on fire! Oh my god! Roger has not got a chance! Roger, get up! Is this gonna be a clean sweep? It's we're only one hit away. It's a clean sweep! Holy crap! Claim victory and bask in the glory. A complete and utter clean sweep! Chloe was not messing around. She is the mayor's daughter. Wow. Wow. I'm, I'm genuinely speechless. Roger was the one to beat, in my opinion, outside of, outside of, uh, uh, Tom. That's, that's pretty impressive. That is pretty impressive. Chloe put a halt to Roger's authority praise like nothing. She she basically swat a fly, despite the fact that Roger was quite formidable to everyone he had faced up to that point, including Adrian, who is Chat Noir. Chloe stopped the mad cop like nothing. Yes, sometimes boot beauty truly does trump authority. Roger had zero wins. Complete queen's clean sleep for Chloe. Can't talk. Anyway, that puts Chloe in the final. Chloe will be in our final. But we still have another match to get through. And that's a really tough one. It's a really tough one. Familial conflict. That's nothing easy to deal with. Everyone gets upset with their daughters. Everyone gets upset with their fathers. But this time, it's pretty serious. It is pretty serious. Adrian is in the hospital. Still tending to his wounds from, you know, the terrible fall he took from Roger throwing him down a cliffside. Welcome to the stage of history we told. And, uh... She wants to go check out Adrian. She wants to see how he is. And unfortunately, Tom said no. You can't today. You can later. You can check on him later, but Marinette, we have several orders, 500 orders of croissants to do. I need your help in the bakery. You have to be here for the day, and Marinette's no. I want to go see Adrian. Arguments have gotten out of hand. She wants to go see Adrian. And Tom needs help in the kitchen. 
But this might be one of the most powerful matchups in the tournament so far. Tom has been undefeated. So has Marinette up to this point. And that is because both utilize the sacred, ancient power of bread. But both of these people, both of them are bakers. Both are bakers. Who is the true baker? Alia made comments in her blog saying that Marinette was the superior baker. It's why Tom had to go defend his honor as a baker in his own right. But Alia might have been right or wrong. Pretty even matchup in the first thing. They went blow for blow, but Tom, being the, sub the baker with more experience, wound up getting the first win in that round. Come on, Tom. Come on, Marinette. Which one will bake supreme? To be perfectly honest, I'm rooting for Marinette. Tom... Tom has got too many wins. He's been too powerful in this tournament. Roger was already defeated. I think it's time for the reign of the big guys to end. Thank you, Oni3, for the $5 super chat. Super chats are most appreciated. They help. And I'm glad that you are uh, enjoying the fighting tournament. It is. Thank you for being such a long time subscriber. I'm glad I still have many of you around. I blinked and Tom got ringed out. Victory will not come easily. It must be seen. More Hitman video will come soon. Hopefully within the year. Marinette got tossed to her father off the cliff. Come on, Marinette. Tom has got a strong winning streak. We've got to put an end to it. I believe in you. I believe in you, Marinette. Don't let Tom win this. Oh, God. Tom's going to win this, isn't he? His, his baking paddle is just too strong. Nope. All right. We're back to an even... Two to two. Fight to the last breath. Mary might be able to clutch this. It wasn't looking good for her a second ago. But now they are down to this final round, and it could go either way. Oh, God, again, Tom just barely jukes around her. God! You know, the rolling pin is powerful, but that pizza peel is just devastating. Oh no! Meredith breaking up! She did it! She did it the last round! Yes, look at that! She did one last strength, one last pull! She beat through her father's defense! She did it! Man, what what an amazing last punch on that one. What a, a truly amazing last punch on that. Whoo! Whoo! Marinette is successful against her own father. She has proven that Alia was not lying. She is the better baker. Took the shirt, too. Took his hat. Shredded it. She is the ultimate. But it's not the ultimate winner of the tournament. She's proven that she's the ultimate baker. She has stopped her father's reign. Interesting that both Roger and Tom, who were winners from the preliminary rounds and had four kills each, were both big dudes with giant weapons, were put down by teenage girls. Chloe defeated Roger, and Marinette defeated her father, Tom. And now, a legendary, iconic battle is about to ensue. That is right. 
It is time for Chloe versus Marinette. This is a rivalry that has hearkened back down to the very first season of Miraculous Ladybug. It is the classic matchup out of all the other characters in this universe that we have seen today. It has come down to these two. The classic matchup. The classic rivalry. Chloe versus Marinette. It is time for Marinette to finally defend herself from Chloe's incessant, constant bullying. Marinette, I want you to stand up for yourself. This match was destiny. And destiny, it is about to be. It is about to be the final of the tournament. Well, Marinette, I need you to step forward. Retold. Marinette, where are you? No, these are these are the wrong people. Okay, there we are. Marinette. Marinette. And Chloe. And we are on the final. So you know what that means. We can't just go anywhere. We have to go to the astral realm of chaos. It is the only suiting place. For a battle as iconic and as legendary and as serious as this. Chloe versus Marinette. Bad bitch versus Baker girl. Defend your honor, Marinette. Don't let her bully you anymore. Prove yourself or immediately have your jacket torn to shreds. Oh, Chloe tried to step on Marinette, but she rolled out of the way in time. That might be the first time we've seen someone dodge Chloe stepping on people. In fact, in fact, Marinette sat on her. She took it the extra mile. Like, oh, so you think stepping on people must sit on your face then? Didn't really help in the end, though, because Chloe got a couple of extra... Lucky shots. And Marinette still lost the first round. The emotional damage was Marinette's. But the full physical damage, Chloe still won out. I still believe in the power of bread, though. Marinette still may be able to get this going. My gosh! Chloe! Chloe! Proving that she, she, I guess she got upset about being sit on. She let the feet connect that time. High heels, no less. Oh! Marinette bouncing back. You destroy my jacket, I'll take yours. Uh oh. What just happened? Oh, Marinette! Come on, Marinette! One more hit! Oh, no! No, Marinette! No! This is not looking good. This is not looking good, guys. Not looking good. Marinette has got, got no win so far. She keeps dealing devastating blows. But it might not be enough. All right, she's trying this technique again. It does do a lot of damage. He just can't let Chloe get in a bunch of hits. Come on. Come on, Mary. I believe in you. Get at least one win. Yes. Oh, no. The high heel damage. Chloe! Oh no. She blocked it! She blocked it! 
If that hit had landed, it would have been the end. But Marinette, Marinette blocked it at the last second. And still is in this. Now Marinette, Chloe still has two wins, and Marinette has one. Oh God! Chloe! Chloe's just not messing around today! She, Marinette still needs another win just to make this even. Can she clutch this? She did! She clutched it! She clutched it! It's now two to two. We're in the final round. This is it, folks. This is the big one. This is for all the bananas. My gosh! She is just... Chloe is devastating with spinning top. It is a pretty powerful weapon. No, she dodged! But Marinette blocked! Oh, she didn't block that time! Oh, she didn't block that time! Oh, no! Marinette's a few hits away from being out of this! Can you clutch this, Marinette? Oh, she might! Oh, she missed! She still might have this. It all depends on how this altercation ends. Oh! Hit for hit! One hit could end this either way! Marinette, are you gonna get it? No! Chloe's reign is defeated! That was by far the most intense matchup I have ever seen. And how fitting that the most intense matchup was the final of the tournament. Marinette reigns supreme. Chloe is defeated. Marinette has proven that she truly has earned her right as the title character of the show. It's almost like the title of the character of the show won the tournament or something. It's to be expected, really. I cannot believe it. Marinette has won. Marinette win. She succeeded. Chloe is defeated. That was intense. That was very intense. Wait, what's that? What's that noise? There's something else. There's another. There's another match. There's another match in the matchup. Something else is emerging out of the astral realm of chaos. But it doesn't make sense. What, what, is, what is Marinette doing? She, she defeated all the other people in the tournament. Chloe is gone. Marinette is the last one standing. Who could possibly be in the astral realm of chaos? Who could be still left? Everyone's defeated. Maybe it's the god of this universe. What is the thing that transpired that made this all happen to begin with? What is the force of nature that allowed this fighting tournament to happen in the first place? It's none other than me, Phantom Savage. I am the secret boss, Marinette. And I have challenged you to a duel! When souls collide, chaos I am the reason that set this together! I put this tournament to see which one of the miraculous characters was the most fierce! And I wanted to challenge you, Marinette! Let's go! Show me the true power of bread and teach me your secrets! Ow, don't kick me. That's not nice. Stop it, Marinette. Ow! Like don't punch me with a rolling pin. I'll teach you. I'll learn you. All right, this isn't going well for me. This isn't going well for me at all. Ow. All right, I'm okay. 
You're a little more powerful than I thought, Marinette. Not quite powerful enough. Did you know that I know how to sword fight? I've cut down more than a few zombies in my time. And you're no different. <laughs> Round one goes to me. Is that all your bread can rise, Marinette? Who cares if she's 13? She defeated several people that are several years older and several sizes bigger than her. She's proven to be the biggest combatant. And so will I. Come on, Marinette. You're not doing much to impress me. You're gonna still stay in this? Hello? Oh! Yep, nope, you're not gonna kick me this time. That I saw that on Chloe, and I saw you do it to several people. It's not gonna work on me. As I say that, you start doing things that make things work on me. Alright, stop it! Chloe! You weren't supposed to do that! You're supposed to let me win, Marinette! You're supposed to let me win! Okay. That's how it's going to be. Would you stop doing- Ow! You literally kicked my butt! Alright. I've had enough. I'm going to cut your croissants into croutons. I never really liked macarons anymore. Anyway, I don't like almonds and I don't like almond flour. Your croissants are lesser. Stop, Owie! Stop kicking my butt! Alright, this is not ending well. Stop it! Ouch! Marinette, this is my channel. This is my channel! Don't make me look like a fool to my own subscribers, Marinette! No, making me look like a fool! I will not allow for this! God, you're a lot shorter than I thought you were! You know, if you were the height of a normal person, you'd be decapitated right now. Did you hit me with a bread basket? Ow! That bread basket is painful! Ow! Is that made of steel? It's made of winter, yet it feels like cast iron! Well, that 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 didn't that didn't, end, that didn't end how I wanted it to end. That that's unfortunate. That's very unfortunate. Well then, I appear to have lost. It appears my big ploy to make all the miraculous ladybug characters fight each other, so I could defeat the winner and be, reign myself supreme. Didn't work. <sighs> I underestimated the power of bread. I should have known better. I've seen Yakedake Japan. Bread is a formidable power. God damn it. Well then, this has been quite a wonderful tournament of fighting. It's been... Ultimately, Marinette was the winner. I forgot what the scores were for Chloe versus Marinette, but Marinette won the tournament. And not only did she win the tournament, she also beat the secret boss. Which is like several times harder than, than the uh, main boss. That's my justification. Because, you know, like in Kingdom Hearts 2, you know, the, the final boss was okay, but... The, the real boss, the, the actual hard boss, was when you had to fight the optional boss of Sephiroth. I was Marinette Sephiroth. And she schooled me. The power of bread was just too much. Oh. 
Well, the end of the tournament. Marinette reigns supreme. Marinette has retained her rights and proven her place as the title character to Miraculous Ladybug. I am defeated, and Marinette goes undefeated. A truly fitting, fitting ending to an otherwise lengthy and intense tournament of passion and violence. Thank you all for being part of this stream. This is the first time I've streamed on YouTube in some number of years, and I hope to maybe do something like this uh, semi-regularly going forward. Who knows? Thank you all for attending. Good night. And Godspeed.